Joseph's final instructions impacted the faith of God's people for generations to come. With his final words, Joseph pointed to something that was greater than the land of Egypt, greater than any pharaoh that had ever lived, greater than his success in a foreign land. And I wonder, as dads, as moms, as adults, youth, or children, what do our lives' priorities point to? Success in Egypt or faith in God's promises? Joseph is a hero, not because he ended up as second in command in Egypt, but because by faith he saw that there was a better inheritance in store. And he wanted to make a statement of faith that governed not only the way that he lived, but also governed the way that he died. And so in life and in death, he gave witness to his faith in God. And how many know my prayer is that others would see the same in us? And so let's consider two end of life lessons that we can learn from this 110 year old named Joseph. Now remember, Joseph's desire was to speak to his own generation while he lived. But he wanted to speak to all generations when he died. His generation while he lived, all generations when he died. So firstly, Joseph knew that life's race is a relay. And that faith must be passed on to the next generation. It's in Genesis chapter 47 that we read of how Jacob, who was Joseph's father, had lived in Egypt for 17 years and called it home at the end of his life. But in Jacob's heart, though he lived in Egypt, he was still a citizen of the promised land. And he had never had it so good in all of his days as he did under Joseph's care. Yet in his heart, he still yearned for that place that God had promised to him and to his descendants. Jacob kept God's call and God's promise at the forefront of his life. And Jacob was Joseph's dad. At the end of his days, Jacob makes a request of his strong, powerful, and mighty son, Joseph. And what is his request? It's that his body would be carried out of Egypt and taken to the promised land after he breathes his last breath. Why? Because Jacob, Joseph's dad, wanted to leave an important message to his son and to his descendants, and that was that God has something better for you than what you are experiencing right now. And when Joseph promises to bury him in the promised land rather than bury him in style in Egypt, How does Jacob respond? The Bible tells us that Jacob worships the Lord. Jacob never forgot his father's faith in God and his promises. And you know who was watching? Joseph. Catch this. Even today, the fact that heaven is our promised land. Every one of us who believe 
It should cause us to worship and to break out in praise in our hearts when someone passes away that we know has slipped into the presence of the Lord for eternity. Can anybody say amen to that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us in Psalm 100 and verse 5, there's this incredible promise. It says his faithfulness, God's faithfulness, continues through all generations. So even as Jacob passed faith on to his son Joseph, we need to picture ourselves picking up a baton and running our life's race with the baton of faith in our hands. And we need to realize that the race doesn't end with you. And we need to realize that there is a passing of the baton that needs to happen from one generation to the next. And you want to run well. And you want to do everything that you can to make sure that you are in stride. And you want to ensure a smooth handoff. Grandfather to son. Grandmother to daughter. To grandson to great-grandson to great-granddaughter. The Bible assures us that as God is faithful to one generation, so he is faithful to all. Can anybody say amen? But it's up to us to keep running, to stay focused, and to make sure that we do not drop the baton. 